Who's that for you? Australian legends. Hey! Sir, can you knock? What's up, everyone? Adam from FWCI, Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. I called it Frozen Kingdom throughout my entire reaction to this movie. It wasn't until I was literally typing the name of the YouTube video in that I clicked that the logo I'd used said Frozen Empire, that everything I'd done said Frozen Empire, but I thought it said Frozen Kingdom. Doi. As aforementioned, I did react to this movie and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the previous one, which I also reacted to. So if you did enjoy this franchise and you haven't seen my reactions, now's a good time. Go give them a look. But this was very much like a summer popcorn movie and there's going to be plot holes galore and probably a ton to make fun of in this. I can't wait to see Ryan George shred this one to pieces and it doesn't affect my enjoyment of the movie. A movie can have plot holes and stuff that doesn't make sense littered all throughout and I'm totally fine with it. As long as it's entertaining, and as long as I had a good time, then it's fine. If it's boring, then I'm probably going to notice all that stuff, and you're not going to have a good time. That's not a good time. But let's check out the pitch meeting to Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Or Kingdom. Whichever one it is. So, you have some new Ghostbusters for me? Yes, sir, I do. And the whole gang's back again. The original gang or the sequel? The reboot? Who are we talking about here? We got, you know, Ray, Venkman, Winston. Nice. Janine is back too, and Walter Peck. Wow. And Gary Gruberson, and Callie Spengler, and Trevor. Which one was Trevor? And of course, Phoebe Spengler's back, because she's like the new star, you know? Wow. Well, sounds like a stacked cast of kids. She is. Take a moment to recognize the chick that plays Phoebe has been awesome both of these movies. Character. And Lucky and Podcast are there too, of course. Oh, okay. The library administrator from the first movie, he's got a cameo. Probably enough. And we got some new characters to introduce, of course, like Nadine. I think you should probably stop now. And Lars, Lars Pinfield, new character. You gotta stop. And Melody the Ghost. Please stop. And Dr. Hubert Wardsky, but that's it. Hey, do you think that's such a large number of characters to put in this movie that it's gonna be impossible to give any of them any satisfying arc or growth? I do not think that, no. Okay, good. So tell me about this movie. I Yeah, good point. The growth that they tried to do in this movie was with Phoebe, which was actually, that kind of worked. That did kind of work. Uh, Stranger Things kid didn't really do anything. Neither did, I guess, what's his name? Ant-Man decided to become the stern dad, which was good. The mum didn't do shit. Um, Acaster didn't do shit. Winston, yeah. Valid criticism, Ryan George. Can't wait to see them bust ghosts. Oh, and bust ghosts they will, sir. Once at the beginning and once at the end. That doesn't seem like a lot. Well, sir, I kind of have a lot of characters to juggle. There's not really time for that stuff. But it's called... I didn't even notice that. Didn't even notice there was minimal ghost busting because I was into the stories. I was, I was into them. For the time that they were happening, they had my attention. Every character needs some screen time. And I got... I got a lot of characters. But you put that many in there. I did, yeah. So at the beginning of the movie, the Spengler family is out on a ghost hunt in New York City, and they're after a flying ghost. Oh boy. And they try their proton packs, a remote-controlled trap, but they finally catch it with a drone. Why didn't they start with the flying thing against the flying ghost? So we can showcase the different merchandise people can buy in store. Smart. That is smart. Well done. Mayor of the city tells them that Phoebe can't be a Ghostbuster anymore. Why? Well, because she's a miner. Right, I mean, I imagine the commute alone from New York City to the mines makes scary. Scheduling impossible. No, she's 15, so she can't bust ghosts till she's 18. That makes more sense. So because she's a sad teenager, she goes to the park to play chess by herself at night, which is a thing that parents let their teenage kids do in New York City. <laughs> Sounds safe. But she's gonna meet this 16-year-old ghost named Melody, and they're gonna bond in kind of a romantic way, but not so overtly romantic that some people could get mad about it online. Sounds safe. Oh, and Trevor's gonna have this recurring thing where he's trying- <laughs> Sounds safe. Um, you know what? I- you know what, there were moments there where I did pick up on very mild romantic vibes between Phoebe and Melody. But yeah, they're right. It, was, it definitely wasn't overt. It was very safe. And a catch Slimer, so that's gonna be fun. Does that relate to the plot at all? Not really, no, but we gotta give Trevor something to do in this thing. Or we could just cut him out completely, send the character off to college or something, reduce the number of characters in this thing? No. Okay. And another thing that's going on is that they're living at the fire station and the ghost containment unit's having problems. Uh, so what are they gonna do? Well, it turns out that Winston, who's been bankrolling them, also has been bankrolling a secret facility with secret employees developing new tech. Why would he not bring the actual Ghostbusters in on that? Because secrets are fun and they have this new thing to extract <laughs> spirits from possessed objects. Very good point. That whole thing with Winston makes no sense. And why did he like lash into um, Phoebe 
in one scene, and then outside of that, he's been like, "Yeah, everybody, I'm on the good. I'm a good guy." That was so weird. Why keep those teams separate from each other? Listen, sir, I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back about Winston's secrets, okay? He likes secrets. Secrets are fun. I already told you that. All right, I guess I can get off of that thing. Secrets are pretty fun. And one day, this guy, Nadine, brings in this very scary possessed orb thing. Uh, scary balls are tight. Yeah, okay, and this guy unknowingly <laughs> comes from a long line of fire masters, and they used to fight this demon that's trapped in this orb. Yeah, what's its deal? Well, it's called Garaka, and it freezes things. Cool. Yeah, and Garaka has this big plan to get out of the orb and make everything very cold. We're talking like Montreal in February cold. Oh my god! Yeah. And so what's the evil plan? <laughs> well, turns out he enlisted the help of Melody the ghost to get Phoebe to kind of fall in love with her. What? So that she would then want to use the spirit extractor thing in Winston's lab to become a ghost for two minutes. What? So that he can then possess her as a spirit and make her body recite a chant that frees him from the orb. What? So that he can make things cold and spiky. Oh, that all sounds contrived and overly complicated and unlikely. Well, it happens! It says so right here. Oh, alright. So then everything yeah i think the way that i described it is the bad guy's plan didn't seem very well planned out and Ryan George agrees. Hundreds of people must die. No. How? It doesn't say that here. Whoa, close one. And inside the fire station, all the Ghostbusters got to prep to fight Garaka. Oh, yeah? Yeah, everybody's going to suit up. But Phoebe's going to be like, I know that Garaka does not like brass, so I need to incorporate brass into my weapon. Well, that sounds like an impossible task at this point. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Melted. Yeah, see, she's going to cut down one of the brass fire poles, melt it down, dip her weapon in it, all in the time it takes the others to zip up. Up their outfits. Oh wow, she is lightning fast. They don't call her Speedy Phoebe for nothing. Oh, do they call her that for fun? No, they don't. For nothing. Oh, right. That is what you just said. <laughs> so also, Nadim needs to figure out how to use his powers, but he can barely manipulate the flame from a candle. Yikes, how's he gonna manage that? By being off screen for a little bit and then <laughs> popping out having mastered his powers. That always works. So then they all save the day, and when they come out of the fire station, everybody's cheering for them. How'd they know what was happening inside? Unclear. And so what do you think? Well, I mean, it sounds like a nice farewell to the Ghostbusters franchise, you know? A farewell? Nah. -uh. We can't let anything die ever. How else can we milk this IP? Ghostbusters animated show for Netflix gets a new major update from Frozen Empire director. Okay, animated show for Netflix. I have to see what it's all about, like the tone of it and everything like that. Could go either way. Give me more movies in this world. I don't care. Give them to me. Ghostbusters, as long as you've got it in some sort of like relevant continuity with everything that's gone on, I don't care. I was thinking the other day, I would love to see a movie where people they, for some reason two characters or whoever has to go on a road trip for one bit of america to the other and saying i'm explaining this terribly from like one side of america all the way to the other side coast to coast road trip and as they go along they pass through all the towns that have been in sitcoms for like the last 20 years and you get like a couple of the characters or the couple of the actors to resume those characters and just chilling out like you know if you went like you know say west to east kind of thing you'd start off with shows that were set in la so fuck let's say fresh prince of bel-air fuck it well fresh prince of bel-air starts off and you know uh you've got carlton is the owner of some giant company or Jeffrey is uh, a concierge somewhere, or I, I don't know. I don't know. He's probably been old for that now. But you just incorporate a known character into the show at that point, and then as they travel across country, you know, you get to I guess the middle is probably a great example. Have a couple of characters in that. Have Sue Heck show up and like say something, helps them get a tire or whatever. And the whole movie is just cameo, cameo, cameo. Then you finally get to the destination, New York City, and then you've got, you know, characters from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and you've got characters from Seinfeld, and whatever, King of Queens. Like, you could just have so many little cameos. That's my dream, to see that kind of a show happen. And uh, that's why I don't care about whether the Ghostbusters do great movies or not. I just want to see more of the story of these worlds and people might say that that's a poor attitude to have and you know a movie's got to be good if you're keeping my attention and you're doing enough to do that then i'm fine with it taking the marvel movies for example they've really started to 
drop off not so much the movies but the, uh, the the last few tv series that they've had with the exception of x-men 97 i just want to be very clear about that the overall quality is starting to wane but it's still got my interest so eventually things get so boring that you just kind of drop off like i guess my relationship with professional wrestling for example it just got to the point where i had to just walk away from it and have a break for a couple of years and things are getting good now again thankfully but i definitely have my limit and Ghostbusters Frozen Empire was highly entertaining. It certainly didn't let down the franchise or anything like that. And uh, I'm interested to hear what you all think about this crazy rant that I just went on about my fantasy TV show and uh, what your thoughts are on Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. But thanks for checking this video out. Go to patreon.com slash FWCI if you want to support the channel a bit further. And as always, everyone, be well. Stay safe. Oh, I got one more thing to say. One more thing to say. I just watched Beetlejuice and young Alec Baldwin looks like Ryan George. There, I said it. It's out there. And as always, everyone, be well, stay safe, look after your friends. See you in the next video. God, he looks fucking weird, doesn't he? Doesn't he look weird there? Ugh. Peace.